Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Um, if um, it's first of all, it's a holiday season, and I had some extra lights left over. They're the old kind with the incandescent bulb. If I were to string those up along the wall over there and transmit into them, um, would um, would they uh, light up and uh, how much RF would it take? And also, what would it look like? Would, um, would it look like, um, uh, would they all be the same brilliance? Would the one at the top, that way, <laughs> would that one at the very top be brighter than that one? And if so, why would that be? Why would one ball be brighter than the other if, in fact, that's that's the way it happens? Um, the question is a good one. And let's think of, don't know my right from my left. Let's, uh, I used to testify in court as an expert witness on construction. And uh, the bailiff would say, uh, or the judge, uh, Mr. Heath, raise your right hand. I'd have to go, oh, wait, uh, yeah, this one. <laughs> anyway. Um, one bulb, all the bulbs, some of the bulbs, are they all going to light up? What What's going to happen when I transmit into this? And in essence, it becomes sort of a dummy load, but it also becomes sort of a vertical antenna. So what do you think? Will, it, uh, will they all be the same? You sort of know the answer probably already, but maybe not. So let's... Uh, Let's bring up the video that I shot of, uh, of these bulbs and see what happens as I light them up. What will it be like? And here we go. I'm going to move the bulbs over to the middle. Also, in the, uh, what I'll do is I'll light them up first as, uh, with a green background, and then I'll chroma key that out and, uh, and go to black. So. Here we go. What will the bulbs look like and what lesson can we learn from that? Okay, there we go. There's um, the nine bulbs arrayed and I'm keying into them about 100 watts and with the bright lights on and the green background, it's just not showing up. And some of the shadows look a bit funny too. So let's go to a black background with the same nine bulbs and I'll chroma key them out. So there you see them lighting up and let's uh, let's do it with just uh, the black background. Okay, clearly the bulbs at the bottom are not as bright as the ones at the top. And the top one is, is the very end of the vertical dummy load. And again, it's sort of like a, a 10 meter dummy load. It's um, uh, set up so that the impedance is pretty close to 50 ohms and I use an antenna tuner. Yep. Happy Holidays from Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer here in Rockland, California. All right, so there are the bulbs. The top one, um, really bright. Bottom one, barely lit up. Barely has any voltage on it. So the top clearly has the highest voltage because the bulb is the brightest, right? And the bottom bulb has the lowest voltage, so it has the least brilliance. Well, here's the question. If the top bulb has the greatest voltage, where does the greatest radiation occur? Where does that happen? We've shown that that's got the brightest, greatest voltage, does it occur at the top? Greatest radiation at the top because it has the highest voltage? No. It happens at the bottom. Yeah, it does. The bottom is the high current place, and that does the most radiating. The top has the least current. The top has the greatest voltage and the highest impedance. The bottom has the, the bottom of, of this uh, antenna has the uh, lowest impedance and the greatest current. Top has the greatest impedance and the lowest current. 
Why is that significant? Well, think about what you might be installing. Um, let's say you're mounting a, a mobile antenna in the bed of a truck and you put it in the corner of the bed up against the tailgate and the side sidewall. Um, guess what? You're blocking off the place where most of the radiating occurs. It's better if you can get that up out of the bed or on a bed rail by far. Um, think of a, this again as a quarter wavelength antenna and think of that quarter wavelength and where it would go through zero at the top and the greatest part of the curve at the bottom. Like a lot of things in amateur radio, you, you may have had this on an exam or may not. It's a practical question. I don't know if it's on any of the exams. I'll have to look. I, I use ham radio prep <coughs> dot, <coughs> excuse me, I use uh, hamradioprep.com for a lot of my research and I'll have to go look. I don't know that it's on there. A lot of good questions are not on there and this is one. It's a tricky one, but if you learn the answer, it starts to make sense and think of this thing as, uh, as a dipole. We turn on its side, double it, feed it in the middle. Most of the radiating on a, radiating on a dipole occurs in the middle, uh, not on the whip tips or on the ends. It does have the highest voltage at the ends, but the greatest radiation occurs in the middle. So sometimes when you can get an inverted V up high, that's really good because you've got the, the uh, the greatest radiating occurs where the feed point is if it's a half wave dipole uh, and in most cases it, it probably would be. If you found that interesting and I hope you did it took a while, oh, it took a long time to, to build this thing and to get it to work and then um, part of um, part of my <laughs> uh, Part of my recording of this was delayed by a trip to the hospital and uh, being an inpatient for a couple of days. So I've been out uh, six days and I'm feeling better. So um, uh, glad to be out. Chaotic. And, and I think I'll do that maybe as my next video is just the trip to the ER. I don't know what to think. Anyway. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Set it up so you get the, the notification. and. Um, uh, let me know what you think about this video and how I presented the, uh, the information. I'm Jim, your YouTube Elmer in Rockland, California, W6LG73. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Bye-bye.